Good morning. Let us come back to the first module, simple stresses and strain. The last class we discussed about uh, the mechanical properties of materials. Then we started uh, with stress. We discussed about uh, various stresses encountered in practice. Stresses encountered in practice are a normal stress and a shear stress. Again, normal stress depends upon the nature of uh, the load or forces the body is subjected. Uh, it may be a tensile in nature or compressive in nature. Also, we learned about uh, the strain and we stated uh, the linear strain. Uh, we stated stress. Whenever an elastic body subjected to external force or forces, uh, it develop uh, the internal resistance is called stress. In other words, uh, a resistance offered by a body or resistance offered by a body against deformation is known as stress. The same way we defined uh, strain. Whenever an elastic body is subjected to external force or forces, its shape and uh, size changes. In such a situation, we call the body is said to be under strain or body is strained. In other words, uh, strain is the measurement of change in dimensions caused by the applied force or external forces. Based on these definitions, we also defined uh, the linear strain. It is uh, defined as the ratio of change in linear dimension to the corresponding original dimension is known as uh, strain. And for that, we have gave uh, example for a, a solid circular bar subjected to axial uh, load. Now, with this basic concept, let us proceed the other uh, another uh, important terminology. Longitudinal strain and lateral strain. Just before now, it is to be defined. Uh, linear strain, change in linear dimensions to the corresponding original dimension is known as linear strain. Whenever an elastic body is subjected to external force or axial force, axial force means if it is subjected to a direct force like this. Uh, if you consider a bar, a bar like this, uh, uh, it is an axial force. And if you consider this bar, say let us consider this is a rectangular bar. Uh, for a better understanding, let us the, write this uh, in the isometric view. It looks like this. Let L is the length of the, the bar D is the depth of the bar and uh, B is the width of the bar. It has three dimensions. So, when this uh, 
rectangular bar subjected to axial load of magnitude p uh, with respect to this bar uh, we can easily understand this uh, longitudinal strain and lateral strain as we already defined that when a bar or a material is subjected to equal and opposite uh, pull in the bar at each and every point there develop the a force resisting force the resisting force so developed at every point to oppose this applied pull is known as uh, a stress it is uh, tensile in nature in the same way we define suppose if the if we re reverse this uh, the applied load into a push equal and opposite push again resisting force will develop inside the body at each and every point the resisting force so developed to oppose the equal and opposite push it is known as a, a, a compressive stress also we know that whatever stresses are accompanied by strain if the stress is tensile the accompanied strain is a tensile if it is a compressive it is a, a compressive in nature if it is a shear stress it is a shear strain so let us consider this bar based on this uh, this load applied on the bar and we can see here whenever an elastic bar is subjected to axial load like this strain not only occurs along the line of action of the force but also at right angles to the line of action of the force the strain which occurs along the line of action of the force is known as longitudinal strain and the strain which occurs perpendicular to line of action of force is known as lateral strain in this case as this bar is subjected to equal and opposite uh, pull strain occurs along the line of action of the force and strain also occurs perpendicular line of action of force here the tendency of uh, the change in dimensions are because of the supplied load is definitely we can say it is there is increase in length and as there is increase in length uh, there must be decrease in the lateral dimensions here the strain occurs along the line of action of force will be a tensile strain and because of this decrease in lateral dimension there is uh, uh, another strain it is called as lateral strain always uh, the longitudinal strain the magnitude of longitudinal strain is greater than the lateral strain and they are opposite in nature see here uh, because of the supplied pull there is tendency of increase in length increase in length divided by the corresponding version length gives us the tensile strain and again since there is increase in length there must be decrease in the lateral dimensions there is decrease in delta b width and decrease in de uh, depth delta d as these dimensions are decreased obviously it is uh, decrease in value always when it's a compression so here strains are compressive and they are opposite nature if longitudinal strain is uh, positive automatically the lateral strains are negative always the magnitude of longitudinal strain is more than the uh, lateral strain so this is about uh, the longitudinal and lateral strain basically both longitudinal and lateral strains are linear strains so here we measure longitudinal strain and lateral strain based on the linear dimensions change in length is a change in uh, again linear dimension change in length divided by original length and again change in width by original width change in depth by original depth all are linear dimensions if you calculate strain based on linear dimension and that strain is said to be linear strain here both longitudinal and lateral strains are both are linear strain but to express uh, in a different way 
If strain develops along the line of action of force, that the strain is known as longitudinal strain and the strain which develops along the perpendicular to the line of action of force uh, are known as lateral strain. Next, so let us introduce another important uh, uh, term, elastic limit. While discussing about uh, uh, mechanical properties, we have named various mechanical properties namely elasticity, plasticity, ductility, brittleness, malleability, toughness, hardness and last one is strength. Elasticity is the property of the material by virtue of which it retains its uh, or regain its original shape and size. When once applied uh, force or load is uh, removed. Also we stated that it is this property is highly desirable for all our construction materials. Elastic limit, it is uh, the stress. For all our consideration, we consider this elastic limit as a stress up to which uh, the given material retains its elasticity. When once the material passed beyond uh, elastic limit, it becomes uh, plastic. For every materials, it is having its own elastic limit or every material possesses their own elastic limit. Also in the last class, we discussed that uh, for civil engineers, all materials are good and we use all the materials uh, for one or other purpose in construction activity. And also, we assume all materials are elastic material. When we consider or when we treat all materials are good, all materials are elastic material. Up to elastic limit of the uh, that material, the material retains its elasticity. When once the material passes its elastic limit, it becomes plastic. Every material possesses their own elastic limit. The most commonly using uh, construction materials are so our uh, uh, steel, a cast iron, a timber, our uh, aggregates. For design consideration, we treat all materials are elastic limit and every material having their own limit. Up to that limit, uh, they can able to uh, resist against the load. So, based on that limit, we decide the, uh, the carrying capacity of the material. Generally, in order to enhance the elastic limits, we combine the material. We combine the material and uh, by combining material, we made a single uh, member and that we made the, the, the single material to receive the load again to enhance the, the capacity, carrying capacity. And all those things we are going to discuss uh, in, in detail in the forthcoming topics. Next, uh, after this elastic limit, uh, it is a, uh, it is the stress, elastic limit is anything but a stress up to which uh, material retains uh, its elasticity. Every material has its uh, own elastic limit. So, these two sentences are very important. It is defined as the stress up to which the given material retains its elasticity. Every material possess its own elastic limit. Now, let us consider another uh, uh, principle it is called as uh, Hooke's law.
this is an important law based on again uh, elastic limit. Uh, a famous uh, mathematician invented the law, hence the name uh, Hooke's law. Uh, we start using uh, this Hooke's law in this uh, strength of material. We keep on using this uh, in different subjects, wherever we consider material for analysis and design purpose, almost throughout uh, the engineering. Hooke's law is a general statement for ever elastic material. According to this law, stress is proportional to strain up to the elastic limit or up to the proportional limit. This proportional limit is known as elastic limit. In order to understand this law, let us consider a stress strain graph. According to the Hooke's law, for a very elastic material, stress is proportional to strain up to the proportional limit of the material and this proportional limit is also called as elastic limit. Here uh, uh, for a given material, the portion OA is a linear portion which shows that uh, stress is proportional to strain up to point A, it obeys Hooke's law and uh, beyond point A there is again uh, this distorted uh, yielding, there is uh, that, that curvature you can see and uh, B then start it, it start yielding. When once material passes point A, it uh, passes its uh, elasticity or elastic limit and uh, enters the plastic limit. Point A is known as proportional limit and if can in fact that is uh, uh, point B it is still you can see the, the, the increase in uh, tendency of this curve up to point B that indicates uh, the material still possess elasticity that is what it is going like this and uh, the point B actually it is called as uh, elastic uh, limit. But for all practical purposes it is very difficult to differentiate between the proportional limit and elastic limit and we consider the proportional limit and elastic limit as one and the same. Generally we consider point A itself as the proportional limit and elastic limit. So this is uh, most commonly using law and we need to understand what is Hooke's law. In fact, uh, this is general statement for a very elastic material and it is also uh, general statement for our MIT civil engineering students. We correlate this Hooke's law to their academic performance and we consider this uh, abscissa as their semesters and uh, coordinate as uh, the academic progress. And we inspire them to maintain the Hooke's law or to obey their academic performance must obey Hooke's law till they reach 8th semester and it is uh, they are doing so. Uh, you, you, we are also expecting from your side so that you recall the Hooke's law whenever uh, uh, you are uh, going to achieve something in your academics. Now, with this elastic limit and Hooke's law, let us uh, introduce uh, one more term, it is uh, Young's modulus. Young's modulus. Or modulus of elasticity.
and it is denoted by capital E. Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity, again uh, this modulus is uh, invented by uh, the scientist Young's and hence the name Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity. This Young's modulus play very, very important role in deciding the uh, strength of the material or strength of a material under consideration. So, you are going to learn how you are going to decide the, uh, the, 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 the ability of the material, carrying capacity of the material and in detail you are going to learn here and also you are going to use this uh, in the forthcoming semesters. According to Young's, for every elastic material, the ratio of stress to the corresponding strain remains constant up to the elastic limit of the given material. This proportional limit can also be called as elastic limit. And this constant ratio is known as uh, Young's modulus. And it is denoted by E. Hence, Young's modulus comma E is equal to F divided by E, where F is equal to direct stress and E is the strain. Every material possesses their own Young's modulus. As a standard value, the Young's modulus of structural steel is, uh, it is E for uh, structural steel is equal to about uh, 200 GPA. Here structural steel, steel you know it is uh, a material, construction material. Structural steel means uh, the steel which we use for uh, the construction activity are called as uh, structural steel. Young's modulus of the structural steel is about 200 JPA. Again, uh, there may be slight variations depends upon the, the brand of steel which we come across. Uh, that is equal to 200 uh, into 10 power 9 newton per meter square 10 power 9 divided by 10 power 6 newton per millimeter square that is is equal to 200 into 10 power 3 newton per millimeter square. Here in this module conveniently we are going to convert uh, uh, the, the other form of uh, unit to uh, the or convenient form which is Newton per millimeter square like this, a gigapascal to Newton per millimeter square. So, the unit of Young's modulus is, is same as that of uh, direct stress, it is uh, Newton per millimeter square, kilo Newton per meter square, a giga Newton per meter square, mega Newton per meter square and so on. Now, after defining this uh, Young's modulus, let us uh, uh, have a simple derivation for change in length. General expression for change in length. From the definition of Young's modulus, we have it is for every elastic material the ratio of stress to the corresponding strain remains constant up to the uh, elastic limit of the material. This ratio is known as uh, Young's modulus. We have Young's modulus comma E is equal to F divided by E, where 
we call this as equation 1, where F is equal to direct stress and E is equal to the linear strain or simply call it as strain. If a bar of uniform cross section subjected to gradually applied load P, if a bar of uniform cross section area A subjected to gradually applied load P say like this. So, let us consider a bar of uniform cross section area subjected to axial uh, full P. Let A is the cross section area of the bar. If a bar of uniform cross section area A subjected to axial force P, then direct stress F will develop or induce at each and every point of this bar, at each and every section of the bar. So, based on this we can write expression for uh, the stress. Here direct stress F is equal to P divided by area. We know that uh, stress is equal to force per unit area. So, direct stress F is equal to P divided by area, call this as equation 2. Now, let L is the original length of the bar and delta L is the, the change in length of the bar due to the supplied load. Then linear strain will develop because of this applied load is equal to that is linear strain E is equal to delta L by L where call this as equation 3 delta L is equal to change in length. caused by the applied uh, pull and L is equal to original length. So, we have expression for X modulus F divided by E, then expression for direct stress P divided by A and expression for a strain linear strain delta del L by L. From these three relations, uh, we can uh, obtain expression for uh, the change in length. Substitute uh, equations uh, 2 and 3 in equation 1, we get that is E is equal to F we know it is P by A the divided by E is equal to delta L by L that is if you rewrite this delta L is equal to P L divided by A into E. So, this is the desired expression. Expression for uh, change in length. So, this is standard expression which we use uh, to find out the change in length and also repeatedly we use this expression in order to uh, derive uh, the other expressions that we will see. Uh, till now it is we have learnt uh, the stress, normal stress, strain, 
linear strain. Also, we learnt uh, uh, this uh, lateral strain, longitudinal strain, elastic limit, Hooke's law, Young's modulus importantly and the expression for change in length, it is delta L by delta L is equal to P L by A E. So, using these uh, the concepts so far we studied, uh, we can solve numerical problems, simple numerical problems. Uh, based on the uh, the data given and we can work out the required values. So, let us stop uh, at this level, we will continue in the next class.